Welcome guys to a brand new episode of Let's Build Jurassic World. As you can see in this episode, we are building the grand entrance to the Jurassic World theme park and building this huge monorail track that will run over the Mosasaur Lagoon. So guys, let's begin. So this build actually took a lot more work than originally anticipated because I didn't really get the idea of the scale of what I was going to have to do. So as you can see, I did a huge amount of terraforming here to add in that grand jungle valley that the start of the monorail track runs through. But then I had to spend a good few hours destroying the forest on the other side and replacing it with that huge lagoon. So now we've got all this terraforming out of the way, it was time to start working on the basics and kind of in parallel to the way we did the Jurassic Park park gate I had to actually I, I wanted to build the actual runway like so we built the car track first in the Jurassic Park episode and now in this episode we're going to build the monorail track first because what this means is we can then build the gate around it and get a proper judge of like size of and you know in what we're going to create so the monorail track looking back at the main Jurassic World trailers we actually get a really good look at this shot and it's of you know the main train like running through and going through the main gate and then we get that grand look over the actual main theme park itself so it was kind of a really basic build this part you know it's really simple really modern and that's what's been really different to this build you know I've done my let's build a castle series in which we built all these really intricate you know old-fashioned medieval buildings but now we're with Jurassic Park you know it's very contemporary very modern so it means the builds are I mean equally as epic but much more simple in the overall design so what was actually the most complicated bit about creating this monorail track was the way that so it's raised up you know it's through the air and this meant that holding up we have these columns and connecting the columns are these nice gradual smooth archways so what we're working on here is that archway so the way I designed it by using these you know half stone slabs we actually get you know it, it comes out three blocks and then it drops down it comes out another three blocks and drops down you can get a really good view of it here you know three blocks you know each time you know it, it, it raises and it climbs and falls again by three blocks and this has created a really nice smooth arch along here and when we duplicated it along the lagoon here it created a really nice effect and then obviously we have to then increase the length of the legs in certain spots because this meant it kind of ran straight down at big like strong foundations into the water itself and now I pre-built the gate in my own time to make sure I got it absolutely perfect for you guys and that meant actually that the monorail track had to be adjusted and I adjusted it because it had to be an odd number so I made it one you know I split it down the middle and actually made it three blocks wide or well five blocks wide instead of you know instead of what it was earlier instead of being four blocks wide so then once we've got that in and it's the right size and to the right scale it was time to work on the gate now with pre-building this this meant this whole build bit was much more smooth I didn't really kind of have to I didn't wing it I didn't do it just I didn't do it just as I was recording I made sure I got it absolutely you know to the standard I was happy with so this meant that the main base had to be eight blocks long and then so once I put the eight blocks in I then built the landscape up around it and this you know was really nice and now with it, with, because I wanted it to be this big, huge, grand entrance, you know, size and scale was hugely important. So here we make it 34 bl blocks high at its tallest point. And then with that four, like 34 block high pillar, I then gradually increased this side of the, this side of kind of, you know, the whole, the structure. I don't really know what you call it. I mean, it's kind of the end of the side of the gate. I don't know, you know, take your pick. But so to meet that 34 block high kind of pillar, I then gradually by using combining stairs and just normal blocks, we kind of slowly meet up, you know, to the actual pillar itself until it points at a very like sharp top. And this is exactly really how it looks within that epic film. So then to give it a bit of depth and so we can go back later and add in a little bit more detail, I then made it three blocks wide because just being one block it looks a bit flimsy, a little bit odd. And if it was two blocks, when once we had the actual gate on itself, it wouldn't have been even. So making it three blocks wide was both functional and for a design purpose. So now we add in those epic Jurassic World torches that, you know, line the edge of the gate. And in a, in a, you know, in an ideal world, I would have been able to use netherrack in some sort of way to light these up. But because netherrack is a one block, you know, is one block in size, it's too big, it's too bulky, and just really wouldn't work for the build I was doing. 
So now the main reason I pre-built this gate was for this point, the bit when we actually build the, the sign itself. And now again, like in a similar way to the Jurassic World build, we are hugely limited, li limited to Minecraft's kind of potential. Even though it could, we can create these grand epic structures, we can't really create intricate details. So the actual world, the words Jurassic World, we could not do. That would be impossible within Minecraft. So, you know, I just kind of replaced this with a combination of blocks and using this lapis, I don't know how to pronounce it, this lapis blue block. It just, you know, it looks really nice and I feel it's a good kind of substitute. It still gives that effect. You know, we can still tell this is the entrance to that iconic park. Now, as we build here, you know, by looking back at that trailer, it was quite, it's a lot of framework to the actual sign itself. So that's why I used a lot of like half slabs here because to create that idea of a frame. Now, what was equally important is like that Jurassic Park gate, we have two epic doors that swing open and let the monorail run through. And I could have just gone back to the Jurassic Park gate and copied, you know, just kind of copy and pasted the exact same design we did for the door there. But I felt it was time for a little bit of refinement, add a little bit more detail here, and you know, just make it so we can tell it's a little bit different, you know. Obviously, the style of this gate is hugely inspired by Jurassic Park, but it's also, you know, important to make sure we recognize this is a brand new build brand new park and for that reason I decided to build a nice new gate. Now we ran into a problem. The way I had a bit, added a bit of depth to the gate by kind of combining these like two shades of wood meant as we're building up this second shade here to give it that depth as we ran it back down it actually crashed into one of the torches. Now I only guessed that there's torches on this side of the gate but we never actually see this side of the gate so we don't know. So for that reason I felt okay actually removing the torches from this side because in the films we never know actually is there a torch on this side and for the fact that I want this gate to work and I want it to be nice and deep and you know have that extra bit of detail I felt I could kind of sacrifice those torches for some epic gates. Now in terms of detail, it was time then to just kind of add the finishing touches. So I, I lined it with these, you know, wooden fences here, which I feel gave a really nice effect. But as we zoomed out here, I feel we could go one step further and I kind of move back in and create this nice little wooden frame. And I feel this looks like it's a bit more structural and a little bit more realistic. It's kind of what you see on a barn door. So then obviously we just duplicate it onto that side. And now we come to add in the final detail. Earlier I mentioned that we made it three blocks wide so we could actually add a little bit of depth, a little bit more detail and we actually do this by for the center blocks here you know raising them up one extra step because then when we zoom out here it adds that nice little lining shadow down the side and just again adds the extra bit more detail now as you can see as we're flying around here I actually added in a bit of foliage here and there you know I made the trees grow as close as possible to the gate and as we zoom out here, I think we've done a really good job of this episode. You know, I, I was even though it's a lot more work than I anticipated, there's a huge amount of terraforming involved. I am really pleased with the result. So guys, thank you very much for watching this episode. And in the next episode, we're going to work on the Tyrannosaurus Rex Kingdom. So guys, I'll see you then and goodbye.